Hello, everybody. Today, I want to teach you how to create a line of best fit. So if you would, make this the uh, title of the next open page in your math notebook, then mark that page, close it up, and here we go. Uh, we looked at a bunch of vocabulary about these creations called scatter plots yesterday. And scatter plots can have a negative correlation, a positive correlation, and no correlation. So, we t you know, a negative correlation generally meant as this variable increased, this variable decreased. And so you'll notice we see they're correlated. They're not perfectly lined up, but generally um, they trend down. Like if there was a line, they would have a negative slope. Positive correlation as this variable increases, this variable also increases. Um, and again, they kind of move in that direction. It's not perfect. And then sometimes there's no correlation, which means as one variable went up, the other didn't really follow any pattern. So we wouldn't look at this one and say more of this means more of this or less of this. They're just kind of randomly um, scattered around. That's no correlation. So one of the things we do with scatter plots uh, is create what's called a line of best fit often. And here's how they work. So we look here, the scatter plot showing um, study time in a certain class, and then the, the grade that the student got on a certain test or um, in the class or something like that. And here we go. Looking at this, um, I would say there is a positive correlation. To me, it seems like the farther, the more time studying, the more up the grade went generally speaking. Um, and that's what that means. So since there's a positive correlation in this case, that means more of this variable um, correlates with more of this variable, more math grade, higher math grade. Um, note that it's not a guarantee. Uh, you know, this person here spent more time studying than this person and did not get a higher grade than that person. It's not a guarantee, but it's generally speaking, the people over here who studied more did a little better than the people over here who studied less. And once we know that correlation, here's what we, we create often what's called a line of best fit, which is um, not what you might think. It's, that might sound like we're just going to like connect all the data points and make a line graph, but we're not going to do that. What you do is you, to the best ability you can, you create a line that's as close to as many points as possible. So like if I did it on this one, I would probably make a line about like that. It needs to be straight. I did my best to make it straight. You know, some of the points will be above the line. Some of the points will be below the line. A lot of the points will be very close. And it's sort of a line that fits the data the best, best fit. Um, is what it's called. You want as many points as possible to be close. You want roughly, you know, as much above or below as you can um, and kind of works like that. That's called a line of best fit. They're hard to do. Um, you get kind of used to it. Like I wouldn't want to do one, you know, if I kind of look at my earlier points, it might be tempting to do one kind of like this, but then all these are like way far from the line. Um, or if I ignore all these, you know, I can get one like that. I don't know, that might be pretty close to. You want to just do the best you can to fit one straight line to the data. So mine would probably look something like that. There's a few above it, there's a few below it, there's like one way above, one way below, they kind of balance out. The ones that are close kind of balance out and you just kind of do the best you can. It kind of shows, here's like generally the slope of the data. So there's a positive correlation and we can look at this and kind of say, yep, the data have a positive slope. Here's the line that kind of shows it. Um, they only work when there is a correlation or an association. So when you look at one like this, positive correlation, not really. Negative correlation, not really. I would say that there is no correlation here. Uh, and, and when I look at what the data is, it kind of makes sense. New chicken eggs on farms in a certain day and the number of ice creams sold in a certain day. I don't know why those would be related anyway. I don't know why more chicken eggs would mean more ice cream or less chicken eggs would mean more ice cream or anything like that. 
Um, so, you know, when I describe this, I would just say the number of chicken eggs and the number of ice creams are not related. They just aren't correlated at all. They don't have anything to do with each other. And that makes sense when I think about it. And I think the data shows that there's no real pattern here. So there is no line of best fit. It's not possible to make a line of best fit if the data don't work. Um, here's the one I want us to do together. So this is our taxi problem that we have been looking at for a few days. And you probably have a copy of it already in your notebook somewhere is why I picked it. If you don't, I'll give you one um, tomorrow uh, in class to do this. So looking at this, is there a correlation? Is there an association between the amount of time and the distance uh, driven on these taxi rides? There is. Looks to me generally positive. More time meant more distance generally. Notice it's not perfect. You know, this was a longer ride in time than this one, but shorter in distance than this one. It's not perfect in statistics, but it's roughly or generally speaking. So I would say this is a positive correlation. And that means generally speaking, um, farther, more here, rides take longer, farther here, generally speaking. That's what that positive correlation means, or more time correlates with more distance, um, which makes sense to us as well. So line of best fit, what I'm going to do for a line of best fit is I want to create a line that generally shows where the data goes. I want it to be roughly, this one looks kind of nice to do, kind of roughly right through the middle of the data. I want it to kind of feel like there's about as many above as below the data. Uh, I Notice I didn't try to connect any points, anything like that. Um, my idea is just to create one single straight line that kind of shows the general path of the data. There's a bunch above it, there's a bunch below it. This is like roughly where they go. And that is called a line of best fit. Um, again, this only works, you only have lines of best fit when you have a positive or a negative correlation. This next one has neither. Um, the number of hours of internet used per week. Uh, oh, that's here, sorry. Number of hours of internet per week. Correlated with age, does how old you are have anything to do with the amount of internet you use? Well, it looks like probably not. There's older people with a lot of internet. There's younger people with a lot of internet. There's older people with a little internet. There's younger people with a little internet. Doesn't seem to really have anything to do with each other. I don't see any correlation when I look at this. And I don't know why I would. These things don't seem like they would have an effect on each other. Um, and they don't. So age and internet use are not correlated. Older doesn't mean more internet use. Younger doesn't mean more internet use. They're just not really related. So you can't make a line of best fit, and that's important to remember as well. Uh, that only works when there is a correlation. If there's no correlation, you can't make a line of best fit. Um, so last little thing uh, we'll do, I want you to take a look at these and decide, did uh, the line of best fit come out pretty good here or not? Could it have been better? So pause here and decide yes or no on each of these. How good of a job did the person do of making the line of best fit? Um, and then unpause when you're ready to think it through with me. This one's a hard one. The first one's a really tough one to tell because you'll notice the data is pretty scattered out. There is definitely a positive correlation here. You know, there are lower numbers here, are lower numbers here. So I think there is a correlation and I would do one. Um, but they're so spread out that it's hard to tell if they did a good job. If you want to, try to make a better one if you said it's a no. Like, would it be better if I did that one or something like that? Generally speaking, I'm going to say I think this person did pretty good and a tough one. You know, there's some that are pretty close above and below. There's some that are pretty far above and below to balance out. I think they did pretty good, but that's a hard one to do. Um, this one, I think they did really good. You notice here it's easier to tell the data is all pretty close to that line, so that's really nice. Um, this one I would give a no. There's a lot more above it, 
and none below it, which means they probably should have shifted it up a bit more like here or something, where some of the data is above, some is below. I think that one's too low. Um, this one, hard one too, there's this outlier way over here makes me think maybe we should have aimed more that way and kind of done it more like this would have been better. Then I think there's more a bit closer to that one and that I'm going to give that one a no, it could have been better. Uh, this one shouldn't have done one at all. There's no correlation here. You'll notice the data points are all over the place. I don't even think there should be one um, anywhere, not related. And then this one, I think pretty good too. Yes or no. Folks, that's how you make a line of best fit for a scatter plot. I hope it made all the sense in the world. If you need to go back and review any part of this again, please do. And I'll see you tomorrow.